I just like to say thanks to the uh, NANA committee for giving me this uh, opportunity to speak about iPods at this event. So today I will talk about iPods system overview, particularly focused on um, iPods Open. Then I will talk about state local adoption and usage of uh, iPods. Finally, I will talk about future alert and warning. Um, just to give you a quick uh, history about iPods, it actually evolved from an emergency alert program that was started in the 50s during the Cold War under presidential executive order. In the event of enemy attack, it was intended to broadcast civil defense information to public using radio station. Nowadays, you're still able to hear from TV and radio sometimes like, er, er, er. Uh, this is a test of an emergency alert system. So that is uh, EAS, which is now is one of the pathway of iPod dissemination. So after 50s, uh, the emergency alert uh, system has continued to develop as time goes. In early 2000s, uh, FCC Federal Communication Commission and Congress passed a regulation and law that require wireless carrier network that provide alert and warning to cellular handset. That's also known as wireless emergency alert. Uh, since then, iPods has become this unique, critical, multi-hazard, multi-user alert and warning nationwide infrastructure. So iPods actually stands for Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, which is managed by Federal Emergency Management AC Agency, FEMA. It was a nationwide uh, alert and warning infrastructure that providing public safety official an integrated gateway to send alert warning message to public using emergency alert system, EAS, wireless emergency alert, WEA, the NOAA weather radio, and other public alerting system, all from a single interface. To let you understand uh, iPods open system a little more, here's the iPod system architecture diagram. So, iPods program management office is managing two major systems. On the top is called the National Public Warning System that was only can be used by the president. We will focus on the part, bottom part, which is iPods Open, stands for Open Platform for Emergency Network. That's highlighted in the blue area of the diagram. iPods Open is actually as a system of system. It uses technology and information standard to join multiple private sector communication technology infrastructure. It provides an ability to deliver a single emergency message, simultaneously propagate to multiple uh, public dissemination pathways. iPods Open is available for use for federal, state, uh, local, uh, tribal, territorial government entity across the country. On the left of the diagram is the alerting authority. They were using iPods compliant alert origination tool to send out uh, emergency uh, alert message to iPods Open. Those messages will be crafted uh, in a CAP standard, which is also known as Common Alerting Protocol version 1.2, with a supplement a specification of USA iPods Open profile version 1. The problem, I mean, the Common Alerting Protocol actually is an international standard that has been adopted over 300 countries and it's also recognized by the ITQT recommendation X.1303. You can find out more information uh, about that in uh, Oasis CAP. iPods Open is sitting in the middle. It will aggregate, authenticate, disseminate message simultaneously to multiple uh, public dissemination pathways. iPods Open acts as a CAP message broker, dissemination gateway for emergency information going over the public alerting system or from one iPod user to another. Uh, there's a list of alert dissemination disseminator that's showing on the right that's connected to the iPod. The first one is an emergency alert system, EAS, that's connecting to the uh, cable, satellite, radio, TV, broadcaster all over the country. Then the sec second one is called wireless emergency alert that most of people also have been received. It's connecting to the commercial mobile service provider gateway via VPN. Um, the emergency message 
will broadcast by cellular network to any WEA enabled mobile device in a targeted area. WEA has a unique feature, a unique ringtones and vibration, no subscription base, network congestion avoidance, support up to 360 character uh, for both English and Spanish language. It also supporting URL and phone number. The, we also it also providing the geo targeted sensing alert capability with a less than one tenth of the mile of overseas. We broadcast of a WEA alert of duration and ability to update or cancel an active WEA alert. The third one is also called the non water emergency message uh, dissemination fee that connecting to the NOAA radio, weather radio. Last but not least. IPAS also providing a public feed for other public alerting systems such as internet applications like Facebook, Twitter, and other websites. A state local unique alerting system such as Sirens, Bosign, and also future technology devices. This is the area we would like to elaborate more and we'll talk more in the later slide. After each alert disseminator receives the emergency alert message, the alert message will broadcast based on Polygon circle or geo code. IPOS actually is a trusted source. Uh, over 1,582 public alerting authority has been signing a memorandum agreement and agreed to using IPOS to disseminate the public emergency message. You can see that usage has been constantly increased over time because they see the effectiveness of IPOS. Even though the original purpose of IPOS was to provide president a means of warning public of impending disaster and attack. But currently, IPOS play a daily role that protecting the public by providing local emergency measure a tool to communicate with their community with, uh, about a wide variety of situations that threaten the public safety and property. The local authority has been using IPOS open to issue emergency message related to chemical spillage, child abduction, dam failure, information on availability of disaster recovery resource, earthquake, evacuation, fresh flood, great lot traffic, hurricane, large power outage, law enforcement operation, nuclear facility accident, roadside closure, shelter in place, water, snowstorm, tornado, uh, toxic plume, volcano eruptions, wildfire, water, water contamination. And also many local authorities have been using IPOS to announce COVID-19 and civil unrest or curfew information uh, in last year. Uh, we'll talk about more uh, in the next two slides. One more thing to that really worth notice is that 92 missing children have been safely rescued since uh, the first Ember Alert was issued through IPOS Open in 2012. Uh, prior to IPOS Open, there was only a few success cases. So in 2020, from March 14 to December 27, in response to global pandemic, the state and local authority using IPOS to send 597 total alert over 120 different jurisdictions. They use the wireless emergency alert to announce stay at home order, request home care walker, provide information on grocery distribution, and giving the location of COVID 19 walk up test center. Now, uh, the alert is uh, being used for providing information about vaccination availability. Also, in the same year, uh, from May 30th through December 27, the state and local authority were and 297 total alert over 56 different jurisdictions to providing emergency information about curfew, uh, road closure, area to avoid public transportation uh, cancellation. Um, now I'm going to play you a clip, video clip. That is a collection of a news report that's showing people who received the wireless emergency alert message and able to survive or save someone else's life. Everybody received the warning, um, in fact, on their cell phones. 
We do begin with our breaking weather coverage. They got the alert on their phone that the storm was coming through and to take cover. It was around 1.30 in the morning. My wife and I were asleep. Her phone received an alert. We went to the kids' rooms, got them up, and they got to the basement just in time. It saved lives in this case. It prevented injury. Police jumping into action and rescuing a little girl. The three-year-old was at the center of an Amber Alert after the car she was sitting inside was stolen. Dave, a lot of people get these Amber Alert notifications on their phone, but nobody thinks that they're going to be the one to crack the case. When I looked outside, there was a little girl, and they are crying. It was a black Hyundai Santa Fe, like the SUV in the notification. So my first thought was I had to get her out of there and get her in the store where it was safe. It was a good move. The Butte County Sheriff's Department says Matthew Klein of Oroville kidnapped three children, including two of his own, three-year-old Ella Klein and one-year-old Aiden. At 2.30, the cell phone notification went out. By 2.34, Lolly called 911. At 2.39, Klein was in custody and the three children were safe. This really is a great example of how the Amber Alert system is supposed to work. But nine minutes turnaround time from the time people were notified to our officers having those children is fantastic. One of Metro Atlanta's biggest counties grabbed some attention by sending an emergency COVID-19 alert to cell phones. Joe Hinkey spoke with the head of DeKalb County about why they're taking this action. Cell phones around DeKalb County began ringing and buzzing this morning with what sounded like an Amber Alert, but it was actually DeKalb County asking people to wear a mask, social distance, stay home when possible, wash their hands often, and get tested. Well, I was just struggling to come up with a, a strategy or a resource where we could directly uh, remind and inform people to be careful, to follow the guidelines, and prevent the spread. You may have received an emergency alert from the state this afternoon telling you to stay home. The governor announced the state is now using the same system used for Amber Alerts to give the public critical COVID-19 updates. We activated earlier today a messaging system. Alerts like this showed up on the screen of nearly every smartphone in the areas where police were searching for the bombing suspect. No more a, a wanted poster, you know, on, a, on the precinct house wall. Uh, this is a modern approach that really engaged the whole community. In the middle of Monday afternoon, a manhunt for a gunman near 97th and Benny. Omaha police didn't want any more victims and notified neighbors like Carol German of the danger. They sent out an emergency alert to cell phones in the area. OPD in area searching for suspect. Stay indoors. This is the first time Omaha police used the cell phone emergency alert system to warn a specific neighborhood of an armed suspect. We don't have time to go to door to door. Lieutenant Jake Ratonia made the call. The quickest way we can get that message out uh, is really through a wireless uh, type alert. Wireless emergency alerts, WEAs, are run by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Wherever there's a cell phone signal, if that tower is carrying the emergency alert, then people that are within that uh, sounding area will receive the message. Not long after this masked man robbed a Circle K, shot an off-duty Denver detective, and then fled, Arvada police were turning to the public, requesting a blue alert. Our system goes statewide. Now, the federal government has approved use. When a police officer is missing, seriously injured, or killed in the line of duty, and a suspect is on the run. An alert that Arvada investigators say helped lead to the quick capture of Samuel McConnell. Wednesday's alert was also longer than normal, a change that was made so more information could be shared at once. you got to get into this to figure out how to use it. Um, and I think that's the most important thing that I would tell people is, is that if you don't use it, you will get burnt. And I mean that unintended. Um, you have to use every tool at your disposal. And when hell comes knocking on uh, doors in your community, if you don't raise the alarm and tell people they need to get the hell out, um, you will be in a world of hurt afterwards. Uh, the more intense the emergency, the more pressure it puts on your systems. It puts so much pressure on it that the cracks actually turn into breaks. And one of the most significant ones that we had with the community was 
be outraged that we have not used the wireless emergency alert system as a county, as our emergency operations center. And um, it was a black eye in our community because people died. And, uh, and a lot of people who left, left uh, running away from flames. And they felt that we should have alerted them to give them more time. Well, when an earthquake hits, seconds matter, and the county tested its emergency alert system for earthquakes today. You're probably one of three and a half million people in San Diego County who got this alert today. The first test of an earthquake early warning system called Shake Alert. Here's how it works. Scientists detect the first wave of energy from an earthquake. They then estimate magnitude and location of the next region that will be affected. The alert goes out before the secondary wave hits, which brings the strongest shaking and causes the most damage. We did an experiment to see how well it worked. We set up about a dozen phones with both local and out-of-state numbers. All of them went off but one. When disaster strikes, iPause allows emergency managers and alerting authorities at all levels to send one message to more people through multiple pathways to save lives and protect property. As you see, uh, WEA is really effective. It's uh, not only helping people to prepare for a natural disaster, but it also plays a critical role in community and helping local emergency authority to send public alert and warning message to save lives and protect property. Even though iPod currently has a comprehensive dissemination ch uh, channel, including EAS, WEA, NOAA radio, internet connecting system, but the technology keeps evolving. Therefore, the alert and warning system need to continue to evolve to prepare for the future. IPOS uh, anticipate the internet-based uh, technology will continue dominating communication, and people will continue moving their daily activity away from traditional TV and radio to internet connecting service and products. More internet-based uh, device and application will develop in the future. For example, computer, streaming device, uh, smart TV app, AI, personal assistance service, gaming device, and smart kiosk. So we need more future technology product and internet connect service to become public alert and warning with the distributor. For example, smart homes, smart buildings, smart applications, smart kiosks, and any internet of things device that has an internet connection that can display packs play audio or audio, uh, video, and they are the great candidate. So how did that work? In this slide, uh, it will show you how internet connecting service and product vendor will work with iPods Open, which is highlighted in the green box. Um, the service or product will first incorporate CAP standard. Vendor set up a server and sign a memorandum agreement with iPods Office. Vendor then will receive a unique pin to access iPods Open Public Key. Here is the complete message process flow that alerting authority will digitally sign and send a cap message to iPods Open. Then iPods will authenticate, validate, disseminate the desired dissemination pathway. Every public alert send it to iPods, will be posted to iPods public feed, which will be kept for 20 minutes. Vendor server will periodically pull alert from a public feed. Then we'll redistribute it or publish the same alert message to app, website, email list, uh, test message, group, uh, social media, road sign, sirens, etc. So, by the way, I know many audience here will be curious about like what we do to safeguard against uh, being hacked from the outside. So, all internet traffic will be traversed through Department of Homeland Security, the trusted internet connector for packet inspection before you reach out, reach to iPods Open. So, we also following DHS the cybersecurity guideline to protecting iPods Open system. So here is a few key items for vendors who want to consume iPods public feed. First, it's able to monitor over an internet connection. Second, 
um, incorporate common alerting protocol, the international standard. Third, uh, it will complete a memorandum agreement for, and then you will receive IPOS program office uh, approval and a unique PIN. Then you can actually assess uh, a monitor and retrieve public alert from IPOS uh, public feed. And finally, of course, you have to redistribute the public alert to the end, your end customer. So uh, I hope today's presentation will let you understand more about public alert warning. And the internet has a huge potential and could play an important role in this sector. When you put on a headphone enjoying streaming service, uh, give, or uh, giving command to Alexa, or playing a video game in the basement or up in the mountain, think about do you want those service to warn you in the event when wildfire, tornado, earthquake that is coming to your area. If your answer is yes, please ask those product vendor to be alert, public alert and warning redistributor. Besides, the internet is huge. The area is so green. Many apps developing up to opportunities available. Currently, there's only a 110 plus internet app vendor has access to iPod public feed. As long as you agree and following iPod's turn, you can build apps, pull alert from us, and redistribute it to people. Remember, receive alert and save lives. And thank you for your time. Well, thank you, May, and welcome, Justin. Mike on? There we go. Uh, John Christoph, um, you seem to suggest maybe you were going to do this in the future, but maybe just to clarify and ask, ask for sure. The streaming media services like the streaming media like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, would that potentially be included as an Amber Alert? And maybe to anticipate perhaps the challenge with that, so maybe partially a question or comment to follow up is, is how you might reconcile ascertaining where the viewer or, or listener of those services might actually be um, to actually deliver those alerts uh, such that they're they're useful. So, so um, yeah, um, I think. I was just going to say because um, the geolocation. Of alert the and any type of, that's correct. So all the alert will be based on geolocation and uh, and based because uh, when they craft it from the alerting authority. They already identified the polygon and circle where the targeted area should be happening. And so will be when the uh, message delivered should be only disseminated to the selected uh, target area. And just to follow up with, is, is this plan to be coming to the streaming services like Netflix and, and the... Uh, so we want... So that's what, what we try to do here. It's like we try to partner with all the different streaming services. Right, right now, we try to work with them and right, um, maybe uh, Justin, you can say, like maybe right now we can't get a hesitation with those uh, streaming services because of other um, uh, legal terms and privacy terms that they haven't really fully on board. And that's why we try to educate the international community, internet community to have more people understanding the importance of um, the the next like uh, all the live streaming service, they should carry that function to their audience, and we, that's why we need your your voice to uh, like let the vendor, let the uh, Netflix people like, hey, I like to have that service. I like to receive that alert if anything happens in my area, wildfire, earthquake. Let me know. Uh, even like that, I think that's what we try to doing here. It's like educating um, more people to understand the importance of the future technology she embrace and the continue to carry on this uh, really important message. Um, that's what we try to do. And we try, besides um, Netflix, the streaming, Spotify, any of the live streaming, even like Alexa or uh, Siri, any of those like daily activity that we have been interacting with, those servers should be carry those message to individual user. Right, and, and just to add to that, we 
all of all of the 110 redistribution vendors that may mentioned have partnered with us on a voluntary basis. So um, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, not, they're not regulated and they don't want to be regulated. Um, so it's kind of an uphill battle for us um, as we try and uh, you know expand public alert and warning. So that's that's one of the uh, major issues that we're running into. Uh, and also they're, they're concerned about their user experience. Um, so we've tried to uh, say, hey, why don't you make it a, a opt-in feature of some sort? Uh, but between a user experience and regulation, um, that's, that's our roadblock.